Welcome to The Hairy Vegetarian. I'm here with, with my friend Brian Shapiro, and he's going to make broccoli rob and chickpeas. Hi everybody. So this is a really popular dish in our house. I don't know, Stephen and I, how many times have we made this? Oh, dozens. Right, it's, it's, a great, it's a great side dish. You can make it as an entree. And broccoli rob is a really, really interesting food. It's really polarizing. A lot of people either really love it or hate it. And, and really, what's really cool about it is it has nothing to do with broccoli, right? No. No. It looks a little bit like broccoli. Yeah, it has broccoli type. The flowers kind of look like broccoli, but it really has nothing to do with broccoli. It's closer related. It's in the, um, it's in the turnip family, right? So it's, and it's, it's slightly bitter, but I'm going to show you a way we're going to cook it today. It's really not going to be bitter. You'll get the, 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 the bitter notes, but it won't be overpoweringly bitter. And one of the other things is I'm going to show you, show you my trick for making broccoli rub without having to wash the greens. Because washing greens is everybody's least favorite chore. Okay, so let's get started with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is trim the broccoli rub. So if you look at it, the bottom stems are pretty woody. So I take off about the bottom inch, and I'll do that on both, on both heads. And I'm just going to set that aside. We're not going to use that. We're going to set that aside. And then what I like to do is, because it comes in this nice bundle, is I like to cut just on the other side of the bundle right there. And I'm going to cook those stems, because I love the stems. And what's really nice about it is they're handy to get right to the pot, because they're right in the bundle. So right over here, we've got a pot of boiling water. Rapidly boiling water. Don't freak out about this, but this is really important. This is the key to keeping it bright green and to keeping it from being overly bitter. I'm going to take a good handful of kosher salt. Don't worry about it. Most of it goes down the drain, I promise you. I'm going to put that in the pot and put the lid back on. It's going to come right back up to a boil. Okay, there we go. Always high heat. Everybody says that all the buttons on the microwave are, waste, are wasted for me. I only use high, I only cook on high heat. So I'm going to put the stems right in. I'm going to take a wooden spoon and make sure that they're pushed under. And I'm going to cook the stems for a couple of minutes. These stems are a lot tougher than the leaves. So once the stems have a couple of minutes in it, then I'll put the leaves in. And they'll all finish exactly at the same time. Okay, so the stems have been cooking for a couple of minutes. We've got a nice rolling boil, and now I'm just going to take the leaves and put the two bunches of leaves right in the water. Get every bit. Don't waste any of it. And then just push them under. And now it's going to have to come back to a boil again. And there's no hard and fast rule for how long you're going to boil this. Um, generally, once it comes back to the boil, I find a minute or two is enough. And I'm going to show you how to pinch the stems. There's a certain way to pinch the stems that you'll know they're tender. So I'm just going to cover this and let it go. And if you stir it around, remember I told you you're not going to have to wash the greens. Because what's going to happen is as I'm stirring it around, if there's any sand in it, and that's usually what you get, it's going to fall to the bottom of the pot. And when we take the greens out of the pot, instead of dumping them out into a colander, we're going to use a strainer. Actually, this is a, a Chinese spider that I really like to use for this. Okay. okay. So now we're almost about, we're just about done here. So if you fish in and pick up one of the bigger stems, and there's a big one, and be careful, it's hot. And you can see that it, it collapses really nicely. It's tender under, under your fingers. When you pinch it, it's done. So we can turn the heat off. So we're gonna, I'm going to take the spider or any strainer, and I've used, I've used tongs. It works. We're going to lift the greens out to a separate bowl. We're actually going to use this same bowl that we're going to serve it in. we're going to separate it out. So be careful. You don't want to kind of disturb the bottom because what you'll get on the bottom is if there's any sand in the broccoli rub, 
that's going to settle to the bottom. And don't worry about dirt. Everybody eats 10 pounds of dirt in a lifetime. Just not in one day. So now I'm going to drain this. Stand back. Clean pot. I'm going to take the dishcloth and dry the pot. Because now we're going to put some olive oil in. So I'm going to put a nice big flame underneath it again. And I'm going to take the olive oil. And I'm going to cover the bottom of the pot. So it's a lot of olive oil, but we've got a lot of food here. So it's probably somewhere between a half and a quarter of a cup, or a quarter and a half. So we're going to bring that in and we're going to get that good and warm. This is an entire head of garlic chopped. I don't know about you, I don't trust recipes that call for a clove of garlic. My unit of measure is a head. So come a little closer, I want to show you the pot. What's in the pot? So here's where I make it interesting. So we've got the garlic and it's, it's warming up. We never want to brown the garlic. I'm going to put some crushed red pepper in. Depends on how hot you like it. Now the crowd I'm making it for tonight, they like some heat. <laughs> so we're going to add, I don't know, about a teaspoon. Pinch of kosher salt. Mix it around, and before it starts to brown, this is one large can of chickpeas. I think it's, what, a 28-ounce can? Goya. Oh, Goya. Goya. And they're drained and rinsed. So we're going to dump those in, and we're going to stir them around. Now, the good thing about using canned chickpeas, and you can certainly soak your own, is that the canned chickpeas are already cooked. So all we need to do here warm them up. Oh, that smells so good. This is magic. It smells terrific. Really, really great. Now, you could not add the chickpeas, add the broccoli rob back, and toss it over pasta. And that's oh. a terrific meal. We do that a lot sometimes. But everybody's so pasta conscious about carbs and and, and white flour and semolina and all that. So we substituted the chickpeas, which give it a nice bump of protein. So if you look, you'll see that the, 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 the garlic is not browning, okay? But the garlic is infusing that oil with its, its wonderful aroma and its flavor. It's incredible. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the broccoli rod and I'm gonna add it back. And don't worry if you get some water from the broccoli rod, that's perfectly all right. And I'm going to stir it through so you can see it. So it's stirring it, I'm stirring it through into the garlicky oil, and you want to get the chickpeas through it. Now remember all that salt? Most of it went down the drain, but it did its job. See how bright the greens are? They got that bright green. They'll keep that green. That's because of the salt. And there you go. You want to taste it? <laughs> of course. Okay. Let me get your bowl. The best part. Mm. There you go. Wow. Now, in our house, we generally eat that with a ton of grated cheese. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> It'll come out. But if you want to go vegan, you can skip the grated cheese. Mmm. This is also a great dish for a picnic, because this is just as good room temperature and cold as it is hot. Mm -hmm. And when I was a kid, we used to get broccoli rub sandwiches on fresh crusty bread. So, mm -hmm. enjoy it, make it, and thank you. Thank you, Ryan. You're welcome.